Welcome back to another quick how-to video. Today we're going to be patching some gel coat cracks in this Larson Citation. So here's what we're looking at as far as cracks. This side is the worst of the two. At some point before I owned this boat, I believe the transom got a little bit soft and the lack of support back there ended up translating to these cracks. Um, in the corner areas on the top side of the boat here, there's also one over on the opposite side we'll take a look at here in a second. This is definitely the worst of the two sides, and I mean, some of you might look at that and go, hey, that's not all that bad. Um, when, you know, in reality, it's really not that bad, but it's a little bit unsightly, and these are wide enough to the point that any moisture on top here is going to get in there and then sink down and potentially cause more problems in the future. So I just want to go ahead and patch these while I can. And here's a quick shot of the opposite side. As you can see, not nearly as bad. Looks like somebody tried to just kind of cover these up with some uh, maybe latex caulk or silicone caulk at some point. And then you got that little ding right there too. We'll try and fill that in while we're over here. So let's get to work. So I started by just taking that rotary tool just to open up those cracks a little bit so that our patch has a little bit more to grab onto. And you can see on this side, those cracks were mostly just in the gel coat. They stopped once you got to the fiber class. Not the same story on the opposite side. So you can see here on this side, these cracks actually go all the way through the gel coat and in some cases all the way through the fiber class. So I went down just a little bit further with the rotary tool there just to try and get a little bit more surface area and hopefully get a stronger bond there. In this case here, it might not actually be a bad idea to reinforce the bottom side with a couple layers of new fiberglass. But now with all these opened up and cleaned out, we are ready to apply our patch. I also have a separate repair going on this jet ski that I'm going to try to do at the same time, but that will be a separate video. There is an entirely separate series of videos going on on this thing if you guys are looking for something else to watch. And for patch material again, we're going to be using Marine Tex. For cracks that are refined to the layers of gel coat, you could just order a gel coat kit um, and apply that. This is supposed to be a bit stronger than gel coat, which is why I'm using it, just trying to impart um, a bit more strength there, especially on that one side where the cracks go all the way through the fiberglass. And while the white is not a perfect match to the gel coat on my boat, it's close enough that it's not going to bother me. But it is noteworthy that if you contact the manufacturer of the boat and get the pigments for the specific color of your boat, you can tint this to match whatever color you want. So the kit comes uh, kind of in a one-to-one -one ratio. This is enough hardener for this amount of putty, but I'm still not going to need all this. Um, so we're only going to mix up part of it. And in that case, it's a five to one ratio. I'm not sure how this is going to work, but because this is such a small patch, I'm just going to try to apply this with a gloved finger. I think the application is probably the worst step in this process. Um, just no real good way to do it. Um, what I did was just jam it in there with a fingertip and then kind of come back over um, with a small piece of metal like a drill bit and then almost just try and like lay a little bit of a weld bead across the top of the gap. 
Um, so we'll let that harden up here and then come back and hopefully make it look a little bit better with some sanding. And here's a quick shot of the other side. Like I said, the application is just a little bit messy, but I think we can come back and clean that up. Hopefully get it looking pretty good with our finish work. We'll let that harden up over the next couple hours. Uh, I usually like to kickstart the process by leaving just a halogen work lamp like that um, pointed in its general direction. The heat from that kind of helps, helps uh, kick things off a little bit. So I'll meet you guys back here when that's all cured up. Well, it's been about 24 hours now. This is set up nice and hard. So now we get to start the grueling process of trying to sand it back down flush without damaging the surrounding area too much. Well, there is everything all sanded and smoothed out up to 400 grit. You can see we got quite a bit of polishing left to do here. Um, so that's gonna be the next step. We're gonna wet sand this up to, I think, 2,500 grit. And this is where we're sitting after wet sanding and polishing. Well, obviously we didn't achieve perfection here, but I imagine if you're watching this video, you're probably not looking for perfection. I would assume you're like me, just a guy with a garage that's trying to keep the family boat in the water for a couple more years. That being said, I think the result that we achieved here is perfectly acceptable. Those cracks are patched and it's going to stop water from getting down into the boat and causing further damage. And we did it in a relatively budget-friendly way. I mean, aside from the tools that I already had, I think this cost right around 40 bucks between the marine techs and the sandpaper. If you include the tools, we're probably sitting right around maybe $100, $120, which I imagine is still a hell of a lot cheaper than what a fiberglass shop would charge you to do a repair like this. And I think that's pretty much going to do it. Hopefully you guys found that informational. As always, if you have any questions, drop them down there in the comments. And let me know how you think I did. If you think it looks good or you think it looks like absolute shit, either way, let me know. I appreciate the feedback. And uh, I suppose we'll see you in the next one. Have a good one, guys. Mm -hmm.